Alright guys, it's time to talk about some of the character balance changes for Season 2 Street Fighter V. I actually didn't want to do this video just yet, but you guys really want me to do this. And uh, I'm not going to say every single little change or every single character, just a little preview, otherwise this video is going to take forever. And then I have to do it all over again when we get the actual notes around December 20th. Uh, keep in mind that most of this is word of mouth from Twitter, from a bunch of pro players and everyone who's tested it at PSX. So some of this could be incorrect or uh, they're definitely going to be adding things. In fact, in that Akuma video that was released by Capcom recently, we saw some changes already in Akuma himself. And I was like, right away, so definitely going to be some changes here. So yeah, uh, let's get started. Um, first with Alex. Alex's uh, EX anti-air command grab, that's that knee smash upwards. Uh, it puts him further away from the opponent after he lands it and he's not able to do Oki. Uh, with Alex before, you're able to do a free dash up, standing medium punch, or command grab. And it's basically a 50-50 game uh, for the opponent. I think this is not really a direct nerf to Alex. It's more like they're trying to tone down command grabs and throws in general from the previous uh, system changes. Also, Alex's forward hard punch on hit has been changed from plus 5 to plus 6. This is a really, really big deal. This means that Alex is able to link his standing medium punch after his forward hard punch on hit. So you don't even have to do it media anymore. Uh, this is going to make a lot more combos. Alex can do something like forward hard punch into standing medium punch to standing light kick to EX chop. Or even worse, he can go forward hard punch to standing medium punch to medium chop and then the opponent's in the 50-50 game between grab or another standing medium. Pretty big buff to Alex. Uh, crouching hard punch as an anti-air is more successful now due to decreased... Uh, startup frames. Um, I think they're just buffing most of the anti airs in the game since they're taking away uh, the light attacks. Uh, Alex is one of the characters that uses a standing light punch as a really reliable anti air. Crouching light punch can now combo into light punch flash chop outside of counter hit. This is a really big deal too. Alex players, when they want to uh, link into their standing or cancel into the light chop, they have to go into a standing light punch. So usually they'll do something like crouching light kick, standing light punch, chop. This is more of like this is easy because then now Alex can just proactively go crouching light punch every now and then and if he sees it connect, he can convert it into a light chop without standing up. Uh, so the big question is, where is the V skill buff? Uh, I think that Alex's V skill is it's okay, it's really good especially when the opponent is dizzy for sure. But the fact that V skills were put in the game to allow you to reliably build V gauge and Alex doesn't gain V gauge from his V skill unless it's a crush counter is kind of silly. I think he should at least get some V gauge if he lands uh, a hard hit from his V-Skill, in my opinion. All right, moving on to Ryu. Uh, there's not much notes on Ryu, surprisingly. Uh, what people have said is the startups on his normal attacks have been slowed down, but while he's in V-Trigger, most of his normals are actually sped up. So this could be a nerf and a buff. Really, really strange. They're definitely looking into his V-Trigger more. Um, and that's pretty much all we have. Let's hope uh, that they nerf that jumping like it because it's, it's, in it's insane. And maybe even his back hard kick too even though they have nerfed that before. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to Bison. Okay, Bison's uh, standing light kick has been changed from a four frame startup to a three frame startup. This is a huge change actually for Bison. Uh, Bison players have been complaining they want either an overhead or a three frame light. They got the three frame light. Um, this is gonna allow some things like, for example, Bison's down forward hard punch makes him plus one on block. And uh, he still had a four frame normal, so if he was against an opponent with a, a three frame light, it didn't really help him because he would trade anyways. Uh, Bison's gonna be, he wants to be really scary when he lands that down forward hard punch when they block it. Uh, so now with that three frame light, uh, Bison's gonna be able to beat any other normal attack from uh, any opponent now. Uh, also, his target combo has been sped up, so it actually combos now. Standing medium punch into down forward hard punch now actually connects as two hits. What do you know? Uh, the crazy part is since Bison's standing leg kick is 3 frames now, he's actually able to link his standing leg kick after his target combo. So you can go medium, punch, down forward, hard punch, standing leg kick into scissors for example. Pretty significant buff honestly. It used to be like a way to kind of frame trap the opponent now, but now you can reliably use it as a combo. This is an interesting change. V skill can now absorb one projectile and be stored. Uh, you input V-Skill again to release the projectile. This is another huge and pretty clever buff actually to his V-Skill. I wasn't really sure what to do with it myself. Uh, it's like an anti-zoning, but the problem is is that uh, the opponent can anticipate it because it has such a long like active frames that the opponent can literally jump over and punish you for using the V-Skill. So Bison players were forced to just absorb it and then juke them. 
and then try to punish him for jumping, but then Bison doesn't get the V-Gage unless he releases the projectile. Honestly, it was just terrible, terrible design. But this sounds really, really cool. Now Bison can store a projectile and use it randomly. And don't forget, this fireball is fast, man. And it's two hits on top of that, and he gains V-Gage from it. Really, really interesting change. Um, with the, the Gray Life uh, Madness, where it, it just takes so long to regenerate, Bison, I feel like, is going to be really, really strong in Season 2. And I can see nothing but buffs for this character. So keep an eye on Bison. I can't wait to read the full notes on him. So keep in mind, guys, I'm not reading every little change that we've seen. We're just trying to keep this video <laughs> at a decent amount of time. And I'm going to go through the notes all very thoroughly in the future when we officially get them. All right, moving on to Jury. Pinwheel motion changed from kicks to punches. The pinwheel was the DP motion for Jury. Uh, instead of pressing down for, uh, DP motion with kick, it's now DP motion with punches. Uh, really odd. The main reason they're changing this is probably because of input overlapping. So um, I'm just learning Jury myself recently, which is a nightmare by the way. And uh, But I accidentally do DP all the time because what's happening is I'll walk forward or uh, back and I'm uh, trying to store charges, but since it's a kick, I'll accidentally do a DP sometimes and then I'll get blown up from the opponent from it. it. Happened to me a few times on the stream already, so I can see why Capcom is doing this quality of life change. V skill startup is faster now, especially full charged V skill. Um, I think uh, Jerry's V skill is probably one of the worst V skills in the game, uh, especially with her kit, considering that uh, Jerry is forced to walk herself in the corner and lose neutral just to get her store charges, and on top of that, she's gonna charge her V skill in the first place. So many charges, so many, so much time wasting, man. And uh, when you're against a opponent with fireballs, he, he when he's throwing the fireballs, it takes you so long to charge and then dash back and then put yourself in the corner. It's just silly. So a faster startup time uh, is is very welcome for Jerry. Uh, less pushback on standing medium punch. This is an interesting change. Um, basically, with Jerry. Her pressure is really, really bad because she needs to rely on her projectile uh, kick charges to really get in. And what happens is when you do finally get in on your opponent, you pretty much have one attempt to tick throw them, to frame trap them, or to shimmy them. And then after that, it's done so. You do not stick to your opponent like glue, like a character like Cadine or Cami does. But now with this less pushback on standing medium punch, Jerry's able to do a standing medium punch and it be at a threat to your opponent to be like, is she gonna throw me? Is she gonna frame trap me? Is she gonna shimmy me? It's still dangerous. Not hit me with a medium punch and then you're pushed back so far that your opponent gains space. And then the struggle begins. So really nice change to that. I think Jerry's already uh, one of the most honest characters in the game. Uh, she's pretty much has a tool to deal with everything. It's just that her tools are just weaker than most. Uh, but if you give her the ability to uh, link two mediums in a row, for example, or buff her V trigger, I feel like she'll be, you know, very, very viable. Uh, especially her V-Trigger, I think they should look at that because her V-Trigger is very weak, especially for a 3-bar V-Trigger in general. Okay, Armika, <laughs> the moment you guys have been waiting for. I'll read a few more notes for you guys because I know you guys get off on this shit. But anyways, Armika is getting a lot of nerfs. Um, first off, increased startup time on forward medium punch. That's the clap, the clap of doom where you know you're dead in 50-50 town. Uh, her forward hard punch, yeah, the startup is slower. It just looks visually slower, probably easier to punish. That thing's like minus a million anyways if you block it. Uh, she can no longer choose the direction that she throws the opponent during Irish Whip. Uh, so what that means is when she, goes, she, when she does forward medium punch clap, she can only throw him forward. And if she does back medium punch clap, she can only throw him backwards. I do not understand the point of this change because the, the Mika player is already going to know which direction uh, he wants to throw them in anyway, so I don't know why they changed this. But I guess they can't decide while she's spinning around. The biggest nerf to her is the invisible wall is removed. So after Mika hits you with the Irish Whip and throws you around, she throws you into the wall and then she back dashes to create an artificial wall that makes you bounce back and then she does the full charge hard kick into the EX Peach and then your ass is in the corner and you took a lot of damage. Um, yeah, this is kind of funny because when Mika was first uh, playable in the in the beta phases, she had this invisible wall, and everyone's like, "Wow, this character is broken because of this invisible wall." So then Capcom took it out, but then everyone's like, "Wow, now this character is useless. She doesn't have the invisible wall." So then and then Capcom put the wall back in in the latest beta phase, and when the game is released, and then now Capcom is taking it out again. It's gone again, man. So much back and forth to this. So yeah, um, that's one of the biggest nerfs to Mika for sure. 
Um, she can still easily put you into the corner. It's just that she won't take off a lot of your life doing it in the first place. Because her EX Peach has a ton of corner carry anyways. Alright, more nerfs. Uh, increased uh, frame on Crouching Hard Kick Slide. I don't know if that means like she's losing frame or it's easier to punish. Sorry guys, I don't have... Uh, it's not specific enough. Looks like more recovery after uh, Brimstone Command Grab. Once again, Command Grabs and Throws are universally getting nerfed in the first place. Which does hurt Mika a bit because of just throws in general. Um, standing Light Punch uh, and Crouching Light Punch have been changed from 3 frames to 4 frames. This is another huge nerf. The fact that Mika even has a 3 frame normal blows my mind away. But yeah, <laughs> it she now has, only has 4 frame normals. So a lot of the faster characters are going to be able to deal with Mika so she can't do like uh, standing light punch, standing light punch, and, and counter hit city, confirm the EXP, put your ass in the corner. So Mika will have a little bit more problems now uh, when characters are close. Crouching hard punch, less safe on block. Uh, it's like minus four, but if you do it like perfect spacing, then it's safe. Uh, they're not sure, of course, what the frame data on this thing is. But uh, damn, that crouching hard punch is abusable online. It's not as crazy uh, offline uh, because you know you can react to things easier. But online, damn, that thing was a pain in the ass. I, I know you guys have ran into that Mika player who just spams crouching hard punch and then starts mashing on his three frame light, and then you're neutral jumping like a maniac to, to stop it, but you can't. Uh, so yeah, they're nerfing that. So the, uh, the big question is, uh, I think, is why not buff Mika's V-Skill? Like, I know you guys all hate Mika, but seriously though, her V-Skill is terrible. It's, it's a cool design. It's one of the most original V-Skills in the game in terms of like how it looks and it really, uh, it really suits her character. But honestly, her V-Skill sucks. Uh, I think Capcom should definitely buff it. Uh, don't just nerf her to the ground and then just not, then ignore this V-Skill, you know? Um, and don't forget, man, Capcom said, don't worry, guys, we're not going to be nerfing characters. We're just going to be buffing the weaker characters. Hold that shit! Anyways, Balrog. Let's talk about Balrog. So Balrog's uh, upper, that's the charge down, up, uh, punch, is now uh, a DP motion. It's up kick, sorry. It's now a DP motion. So now Balrog has uh, a DP motion move. It's his upper punch. Um... I think the main reason they changed this is so he can reliably use it as an anti-air. Uh, now he doesn't have to hold charge to do it. This is a pretty good buff. Um, it is a decent anti-air if you have the down charge ready to go. Uh, also make um, doing a reversal uh, upper uh, a little bit more reliable even though it's not uh, armor frame on one. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, lower damage on the EX rush. Uh, I think they lower damage in the game overall altogether so I don't know about that. Um, Balrog's crouching medium kick now hits low. This is actually a pretty good buff as well because with Balrog, most of the time you're fishing for that crouching medium kick uh, to convert into V trigger reliably because it turns into a target combo. Crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick. But now with the first hit being low, both hits being low, uh, it just raises your chances of actually landing it. And if Balrog does get a conversion on V trigger on you, you are in trouble. It's mix up city or you're going to take a lot of damage for just one or two EX bars. Mm. Personally, I feel like Balrog is one of the stronger DLC characters, uh, for sure, and I hope more players pick him up. And personally, I think Balrog is one of my best characters that I've used in the very short amount of time that I used him. He's awesome. You guys should definitely use him. So, hopefully, uh, more buffs for Balrog. Alright, Chun-Li. Chun-Li was really surprising. I, I figured she'd get nerfed to the ground in every part, but she seems to be getting some buffs. Uh, for one, well, let's start with her instant air legs, of course. I can't believe they didn't remove this thing. They are simply just nerfing it, but they're not getting rid of it. It's absolutely insane. But anyways, instant air legs, uh, now when the opponent blocks it, she's minus two. So she can't get punished for doing it, she's just at a disadvantage. Minus two, so for example, Rashid's, uh, you know, Whirlwind or Standing Hard Kick. Um, minus two is like the magic number in this game. Uh, Karen's shoulder, those kind of things. So if you do instant air legs on somebody and they block it, it's their turn first. But you could do EX Spinning Bird Kick and play that stupid guessing game. Uh, like I said, I'm really surprised that they kept this in the game. Um, now, Chun-Li players don't need instant air legs to be good. They just be using it less and using it for, you know, mostly just throw baits. Um, and like I said, there's no risk to it uh, other like being minus two anyways. 
Regular lightning legs is cancelable into V trigger, and so is EX lightning legs. The first rotation is cancelable into V trigger, and yes, you can convert after it. Uh, this is definitely a buff. Uh, she has even more conversions into V trigger. Uh, pretty insane, and plus it would make lightning legs safe on block too. Um, yeah. Uh, she now can piano, she can mash input into lightning legs now. Uh, so if you press a kick button, I'm assuming five times in a row, she will do lightning legs. She still could do lightning legs, core circle forward kick. You just now have the option to mash the kicks. Really, really strange why Capcom would add this. I don't, I don't know why, but I guess that gives me an excuse to make a piano tutorial again. But uh, pretty interesting. I wonder if any other characters will have something like this in the, in the future. Uh, uh, increased recovery on fireballs. They just want to nerf her fireball game down a little tad. Her fireball is actually pretty good. Um, if you uh, like, honestly, right now um, it looks like she's not getting nerfed that much. Um, I seriously think Capcom should take a look at her V trigger. Um, she at least should drain her V trigger on some stuff. Her her meterless damage is insane. Like, it's absolutely insane. Um, if they keep Chun Li's V trigger the same. I feel like Chun-Li uh, could very well still be the best character in the game, honestly. Anyways, moving on to Zangief. Uh, Zangief has some changes. Um, Lariat now hits crouching opponents now, and uh, his standing leg kick uh, vacuums his opponent, allowing him for a better combo potential to Lariat. So now when you're doing your uh, crouching light punch, standing leg kick string uh, on your opponent, it'll, it'll reliably always combo to Lariat. There's sometimes when you're playing Zangief when they'll be too far. If you do like a forward hard punch and the standing light kick, sometimes it'll be a little too far. Now you can reliably combo into your Lariat and you don't have to worry if they're crouching or not. You could just confirm to that damn thing. On top of that, if the opponent gets hit by Lariat now from Zangief, they cannot back roll from it anymore. They can only quick rise from it. Very, very interesting. Um, now that allows, when you do that uh, combo, you're not giving your opponent too much space and you're staying close and it might be able to give you some Oki opportunities. So that's a really nice buff to Zangief. Um, also, uh, when Zangief does his forward hard punch, his headbutt on a projectile, uh, Zangief actually gains a, a bunch of meter for that. So if your opponent keeps trying to zone you, eventually you're gonna give Zangief a lot of meter. So that's an interesting change as well. Um, and then we're on the street, there's some rumor that he's getting green hand, but I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, I think that'd be too crazy. Um, people don't like it when grappling characters are top tier. Uh, I know it sounds strange, but it's just from the audience perspective and from a player perspective, they do not like playing grapplers. It's not fun to play. And I think Capcom's always going to avoid that because, uh, you know, they talk about how zoning is not fun. People don't like zoning. It's too overwhelming and, and people stop playing fighting games because of it. Uh, I think, like I said, making grappling characters strong would be an issue with that. Um, not that I'm saying that Zingy shouldn't get buffs. He definitely needs some buffs. But you, you gotta be careful with grappling characters, man. You, you tip the scales a little too much, and they'll become absolutely uh, insane for sure. So yeah, man. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens to Zingy from the future. Okay, Karen. Um, Kadeen. Her standing light kick has changed from plus three on block to plus one. Thank God. That was insane. I do not know what Kakon was thinking making that standing light kick plus three. Uh, definitely a much needed nerf on that. Uh, added push block on standing hard punch. Um, so when Karen's, uh, she won't be as sticky on you if she's doing her standing hard punch cancels and whatnot. Um, aerial target combo added. Apparently Karen's got an air target combo now. I do not know what two buttons they are and it only hits the opponent when he's airborne. So I'm not really sure if it causes like a juggle state or something. I don't know what it looks like. So until we see it. V reversal pushback distance increased full screen. So if you hit your opponent with your V reversal with Karen, it will push it back all the way. Uh, really weird. Um, Karen players like to use V uh, V reversal a lot when they're under pressure, and uh, I get I think they get a small Oki option too uh, because of her jump afterwards. But yeah, they made it so that the, the opponent goes full screen from it. Uh, personally, uh, I think Karen's uh, a really really solid character. Um, they should be careful with her balancing though because she already has a really good neutral. Um, I think they should improve her anti-airs though. Her normal anti-airs are pretty weak and wonky. Um, but, and make, maybe her special moves are kind of in, unintuitive as well. Really weird, like her rainbow punch, uh, she goes into down kick. 
or the the upper throw, but then they both can be beat when the opponent's crouching. It's just kind of weird. I remember talking about that in like the beta days when we first heard about Karen. But yeah, the Karen's a really solid character, and uh, they don't have to change it too much. All right, moving on. Let's talk about Birdie. Birdie standing hard punch apparently causes crush counter. Uh, Birdie standing hard punch. Um, it's not used too much because it's actually one of his slowest normals, but it reaches really far. Uh, his standing hard punch actually used to be his crush counter a long time ago in the beta phases, but then they took it out. Now it seems like they're putting it back in. Um, I think it's just to give Birdie a really long threatening uh, normal that he can convert off of. I think that's what uh, Catcon's doing here. I, I think it might be a nerf though if they took out his standing hard kick crush counter uh, because of a lot of his Oki setups because the standing hard kick is just fast enough, especially like after his super for example. Uh, Birdie can do like a dash forward saying hard kick. But we'll have to see. Hopefully they didn't change that. Uh, medium kick and hard kick bull revenger. That's his uh, jumping grab. Uh, it seems like it grabs faster. Uh, this could be placebo. I'm not sure. But basically uh, with Birdie, when he does his bull revenger, when he jumps up and grabs you, the opponent actually has a very, very small window that he can actually throw Birdie or hit him, even if he makes contact with him on the ground. There's like a very small startup to it. Uh, penguin dive. Penguin dive. I'm assuming that's his down forward hard punch. Has less less pushback on block now, and it's easier to punish. Yeah, Birdie's abused this a lot, and the pushback on it was kind of absurd. Uh, so now Birdie's can't just spam it, and you have to deal with his crazy overhead kick and the the, the dolphin dive or penguin dive. I mean, so um, yeah, uh, more pushback on a hard punch bullhead. Uh, hmm, that's kind of strange that they changed that too. I thought the pushback was already huge enough. I don't know. These these notes sound iffy. Um, personally, I really want uh, to see more birdie players. I think we're not. We don't definitely don't have enough. And I hope they improve them in ways where uh, we can see players who are really strong at their neutral game and footsie game without relying on gimmicks. And uh, I think they should make EX Bullhorn a little easier to do as well, considering it is an armor one reversal. It's one of the few armor ones in the game. Uh, but it's really hard to do because it's a negative edge input and it's hard to uh, time it. And I think Capcom should make it easier for Birdie players if they want to actually get out of something. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to see uh, a little bit of buffs for Birdie personally. Okay, Nikali. Um, damage scaling increased during combos but not significant. Once again, I think there's a universal damage buff in Street Fighter V for Season 2. Uh, but Nikali does do a lot of damage. Uh, command grab change from punches to kicks. Uh, this is really odd. I'm assuming this is a half circle back kick motion rather than using a punch. I think uh, the Kali players used to do some kind of option select or something uh, where you get a DP or a command grab in certain situations, and that might be possibly why Capcom has changed this. This guidance, uh, that is the Berserker Slash move where Nikali charges forward, has uh, projectile armor on frame one now. Um, I guess it just makes it easier that if you see a projectile, you can do your Berserker Slash instantly and go through it just to help Nikali deal with projectile users. Even though, like, I think Nikali already can deal with projectile users. His V skill is really good for dealing with projectiles anyways. Uh, uh, and yeah, that's all the changes I see. I think the throw nerfs, uh, the throw Oki nerfs in general is an indirect nerf to Nikali. So um, it's where he gets a lot of his mileage. We're gonna have to see how Nikali's throws work even when he's in V trigger. But if, he, if the opponent is really far away, recovers really fast, that will hurt Nikali. So I'm really curious where he will land in season two because Nikali is definitely one of the top tiers. Really good character. So yeah, guys, this uh, video is running long. I'm gonna have to split this off into another part. And we'll go over the rest of the characters, a uh, little preview of the rest of the characters, and we'll see who gets buffed and nerfed. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think of these changes so far. Uh, what character changes you guys would like to see them do for season two. And yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. So till the next time, guys. Peace out.